Hey, Sam here, and I know your day's crazy, but I've got a quick idea to take your stress from overwhelmed to under control. So let's tackle systems from the classroom to your living room, one simple step at a time. This is the Simple Systems with Sam podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about the five simple choices I think you should make before starting back to school. And even if you've already started back to school, this is a great place to start right now to simplify your stress for later on. I am going to go ahead and preface this episode that I'm finding myself taking a lot of deep breaths and talking a little bit faster than normal. I've done something to my back, and so it's actually been really difficult to take deep breaths lately. So I'm pushing through this recording because I think that this is really important. But I do want you to know that it's going to sound really quick, and maybe I take a lot of deep breaths during it. So the reason that we're going to be making some simple choices right now is because teachers make over 1,500 decisions a day. I'm sure you've seen this statistic floating all over the place. It's on par, if not a little bit exceeding, brain surgeons. Now, in all fairness, brain surgeons do not have like 10 surgeries a day. They don't have a whole bunch of things that they're trying to go through, but they do make a lot of important in-the-moment decisions. We are also doing that in the first week of school. I don't know about you, but it is all over the place. You're trying to assess the kids who are just moved into your class, moved out of your class, if you've got everyone's syllabus, if you've covered all the lab safety rules, what is going on? And I don't know about you, but I just noticed that my second day of class is also fall picture day. So I feel the stress already. And the easiest way to go ahead and simplify that stress right now is to make some decisions that we can rely on in the future to take something off of our plate. So if we know what we want to do about certain things right away, we don't even have to make the decision. It's already done for us. What's also nice about these five different things is that we've talked about them on some sort of level in episodes before this or on Instagram, but we probably haven't related them in this way to school. And so we're going to take a system that we already have some familiarity with and put into something that's going to benefit us right here and right now. So the first one that we're going to talk about is our school bags and having a school bag checklist. You know, I've talked about having a kid's soccer bag. We have a gymnastics bag. I have my work outside the home bag this summer. And in those bags, I keep all the essentials that I need to go to soccer, to go to gymnastics, to work outside of the home. Well, what if we do that for school? What if we created a checklist of the things that are necessary for us to take from home to school and back? Just the necessary things. I don't know about you, but there's at least one time a month where I'm walking in with arms just full of everything you could possibly think of. And I probably didn't need to do that. Let's talk through a couple of the obvious problems. (laughs) The first one being you're probably taking a coffee and a water bottle and snacks and a lunchbox and maybe a caffeine pick-me-up midday. That's a lot of things right there that you're already carrying in your hands. Can you keep a specific water bottle just at school and it's just your school water bottle? You can rinse it out in the staff room sink every once in a while. Is there a coffee maker in your break room? Do you need to brew coffee at home? And sometimes the answer is yes. Or can you wait till you get to school? And that way you don't even have to carry a coffee mug with you. You just have to reload your creamer every once in a while. When it comes to snacks and lunches, I pick one day a week that I actually bring those with me. And that's the entire week's worth of snacks and lunches. All ready to go in the fridge or in my desk so that I'm not worried about it later on. And then there's the things that we put in our bag like tech-wise. The things that we might want to use when we take some things home, but then we don't use it when we get home. So then it ends up going back to school, but then because you might use it that next night, you still bring it back. Don't bring tech that you might use. On that same token, don't bring grading that you might not grade. If you're not sure it's going to happen, there is no point in lugging it back and forth. And we have all been there and we are all so guilty of it, but it's fine. Nobody is going to be upset about it, but you're going to save your shoulders if you don't lug it back and forth. Same thing goes with flare pens. You don't need to bring your entire collection home, and this is something that I am extremely guilty of. Pick three, keep three in your bag, and like make them the ones that you use to grade or to write with all the time. Then just leave the rest wherever they stay in your room <laughs> because you don't, you don't need them at home with you. You really don't. And this is also going to fit really well with simple choice number two, which is I want you to go ahead and decide what your evening routine looks like for every single day of the school week. And I'm not saying that you have to have it perfectly planned out, but I am saying I want you to take some time to look at what obligations you already have or what goals you already wanna pursue and what time you wanna schedule that for. It's almost like doing a mini ideal week, but also just assessing where you're at. 
I actually just created something that walks students through this, and it's a time management check-in. We're looking at where our time is already going so that we know if we actually have the time to take on additional things or if we're kind of planning something where there is no open spot to be planned. For instance, if you have three kids, they all need to be somewhere within an hour on Wednesday and then you got to start picking them all back up and then you got to go home and make some dinner. Between ending your contract time and going to bed, you probably have 30 minutes to yourself. If that's the case, then you already know on Wednesday that your school bag checklist is never going to include grading. You are not going to be able to bring that home, so don't even think about it. However, maybe Thursday, where you have a nice calm evening, there's not a whole lot to do, you could bring grading home if you needed to. This is a time where you have some flexibility and you can take a look at that. But maybe there's also so much flexibility and time on Thursday that you can work towards that fitness goal or you can spend some time reading a book or doing whatever kind of happy relief craft you have. But you can't know what you're able to do until you see what you have to do. So you need to go ahead and see what requirements there are of you every day after school, from the time you get out contract hours to the time you go to bed, and schedule yourself a decent bedtime because you'll thank yourself for it later. Along those lines too, these all fit together really well. Number three is that I want you to make simple choices about mapping out your meals. I'm not saying meal plan. I don't want you to go ahead and get specific with a meal plan for the first few months of school. Because realistically, that doesn't even need to happen. If you go back to our minimum viable product, I just need you to outline what you think you could have. For example, I'm going to rotate three different breakfasts for the first few months of school. That's it. I already know in my head what three breakfasts I get to choose from. And maybe one week I go ahead and say, you know what? It's going to be these breakfast sandwiches every single day this week. That's it. Decision off of my plate, not even worried about it. If you're like an overnight oats fan, then you can go ahead and map that into the rotation and decide maybe right now you can go buy bulk and oats because you know you're going to use it. The same thing can go for your school lunches. If you're going to pack a lunch most of the days, then what type of lunch are you going to have each day of the week? For me, I take pretty exclusively leftovers for lunches. So on Mondays, I pack leftovers. And if we have any bag salad, I put some bag salad in there too. That's my lunch. All week, I take five of them in on Monday and I have an empty lunchbox that I bring home with me Monday and I don't have to worry about it until the next Monday. And for dinners, this is just going to look as simple as creating a theme for each day of the week. Let's say that your Wednesday is really as hectic and busy as trying to just have 30 minutes of free time the entire night. Well, then that's a great time to have a slow cooker or that's a great time to have a slow cooker or a casserole meal. That's that's the theme, slow cooker or casserole. <laughs> on Mondays, we do Mexican Mondays because we actually have a potluck that we attend for a small group on Tuesdays. So Mexican Mondays is a theme. Every Monday, we're going to have probably tacos, taco salad. If I have pre-made them, we're going to have some enchiladas. Th that's it. Every Monday. <laughs> if you know that you're going to be going to the football games on Fridays, then Fridays are probably going to be eat out or pizza nights. So go ahead and plan that into your schedule. You're just outlining what's going to happen, but it doesn't have to be super detailed and you can still give yourself some room to change it on the fly, but it's one less decision you have to make if it comes down to it. One thing that I do with all of my dinners though during the school year is I try to make extra on top of what I think we're going to eat and then I pre-portion the leftovers into individual containers so that I can put them in the freezer so I can take them to school in a future week. Now, if we have extra tacos on Mexican Monday, but I've already taken all of my lunches to school for that week, that's why I know I can already put them in the freezer because I'm going to have to wait until the next Monday to grab whatever arrangement I want from the freezer to take back to school. Number four is something that we've talked about, but I think it's worth talking about again. Decide on a uniform. Make a simple choice on what type of uniform you're going to wear for certain school days. Now, I'm not saying that you need to go very strict with this, but I'm saying you know that on Fridays it's spirit wear day, so you're probably going to wear a spirit wear shirt and jeans. Go ahead and for the first month, pick out two spirit wear shirts. You know why? Because there's only four Fridays in most months, so you're going to wear that shirt twice, and nobody's going to notice. So if you have two shirts and one pair of jeans picked out, you already know what's going to happen. Then for me, I know that on lab days, I also wear jeans, and then I wear just a fun science shirt probably just something space themed because that's who I am. But I, but that is my lab uniform. I don't go crazy with it and I try not to overwhelm myself. I just stick to a basic outline. 
On Mondays, I want to be comfy and I want it to be easy. So I wear a tank top, a cardigan, and these wide leg trousers from Old Navy because they are actually athletic wear, but nobody knows. And they're phenomenal to be in at school. It's not planning out every single day of the week, but it is taking care of some of the decisions that I have. Then I can still rotate other outfits in on other days, but those ones are going to be pretty set for me. And as new things arise, you can always decide on a different type of theme you're going to wear. So for example, maybe it's a game day and that's a big deal in your school. Maybe you have a specific outfit that you're going to wear that's not school spirit t-shirt, but it is school spirit colors. But you don't have to leave this just for school. Maybe you have a uniform for when you get home and you change immediately into workout clothes because workout clothes are either your comfort zone or because it's going to make you work out. And then even pajamas. I don't know about you, but I'm horrible about actually putting pajamas on because I wear so many comfy clothes during the day that I just throw on another random t-shirt and some athletic shorts. But no, I'm going to make my uniform actual pajamas for bed because I deserve that and you deserve that. And the last simple choice that I really want you to consider, and this one is going to be a lot of little choices, is I want you to choose what's on the not a priority list. What things in the first few months of school or until you feel like you've really got a solid footing on the year and what's happening, what's not a priority for you? For me, it's not going to be vacuuming. I'm not making vacuuming a priority in my day. It might also be that I'm not making doing dishes a priority in my day. So maybe I invest in some extra paper plates and some disposable silverware for at home. My not a priority list might also include saying no to going to events or going to dinners with friends just for a little bit because I need that time to myself so I can either decompress or spend time with my kids. What can you make not a priority so that you can decide now that you're just going to say no for a little bit? You may want to decide where the finish line is, when you know you can take more on, but I have a feeling that you'll know. I have a feeling you'll finally hit that groove and you can come back to it and say, you know what? I don't really need to worry so much about my not a priority list. Or I can deviate a little bit from my meal map because I feel like I have the extra energy and time. But for now, I feel like these five things are some really great ways to implement some simple steps in taking stress off of your plate and deciding things right now. Until next time. Thanks for hanging out today. I hope that this simple step will help build big results in your classroom, home, and life. Remember to subscribe, review, and tag me on social media at engineer does education so we can build a simple system together.